welcome to the second part of History of Science in Oxford tour and we start from the place where the Royal Society of London started. Wadham College, above the entrance, something which is now known as the Royal Society Room. This is where, in the middle of the 17th century, under the leadership of Wharton, Bishop John Wilkins, a group of mathematicians, um, um, uh, philosophers uh, and scientists uh, gathered together to discuss scientific issues. Um, and this is how the Royal Society originated. Uh, it was known as the um, Oxford Experimental Philosophy Club. Um, uh, and uh, actually, uh, until now, uh, the chair of physics is known as the chair of experimental philosophy in Oxford. Um, if we go inside now, we will see the door leading to this uh, Royal Society. And Wadham College Gardens, um, they served as uh, uh, gardens for all kinds of experimentation in those days. Uh, so it uh, had a talking statue, it had a rainbow um, maker, and also glass beehives, um, uh, which were used to study bees and designed by Sir Christopher Wren. Uh, Christopher Wren actually left Wadham uh, as a student uh, by that time, but he also uh, became friends uh, with the Wharton uh, and was invited uh, to attend uh, these gatherings. Um, uh, John Wilkins uh, also became known as one of the founders of natural um, theology. Uh, this is branch of theology uh, uh, to, to be compatible with uh, later scientific discoveries. And Wilkins himself, in his first book, which he produced at the age of 24, uh, he actually predicted the possibility of traveling to the moon. So that was a unique society which included Robert Hooke and Robert Boyle too. So Sheldonian Theatre is one of the most famous buildings erected by uh, Sir Christopher Wren. And he was inspired by uh, drawings um, from Rome, drawings of Italian buildings. But of course, the open arena of Rome was not suitable for Oxford purposes because of climate uh, and uh, it had to be roofed. So, Rand designed uh, a specific type of roof, uh, which <laughs> actually with all the supporting walls uh, and without any columns inside uh, was perfect uh, for this construction to continue to exist. Thing to note, um, insignia, which is translated from Greek as the act of dedication, and a special ceremony which takes place uh, in the Sheldonian Theatre every year, organized by the University of Oxford. This is where honorary degrees, including those in science, are given. And Mendeleev, uh, we all know periodic table, um, also got an honorary degree from here. After leaving Wadham, Christopher Wren became a fellow of uh, All Souls College, um, the only college which doesn't have um, any students, as we are all aware. And uh, he was described uh, as uh, the only genius of all souls in his days by one of the Oxford scholars. Uh, and uh, you can see a sundial, which is considered to be Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Um, and it was so accurate that uh, until the 19th century all the Oxford watchmakers uh, used it to regulate their timepieces. And this building is known as Robert Boyle's laboratory. Robert Boyle's scientific work covered hydrostatics, physics, medicine, earth sciences, natural history, and alchemia. We mostly know him for Boyle's law. And uh, many people ask why he is not uh, 
praised uh, as University College uh, alumnus or fellow, but in fact, this spot did belong to Christchurch before. We are going to cross the road now and see the plug which is devoted to Robert Boyle and Robert Hooke, and they were working together. Between 1655 and 1668 lived Robert Boyle. Here he discovered Boyle's law and made experiments with an air pump designed by his assistant Robert Hooke, inventor, scientist and architect, who made a microscope and thereby first identified the living cell. Robert Hooke also coined the term cell and um, he was known as the most proficient mechanic of his times. Um, actually, he also helped Christopher Wren to design St. Paul's Cathedral, and it is not really clear what his part was uh, in uh, Boyle's law. Perhaps his contribution was even bigger than Boyle's himself. Yeah, and then I'll go back and watch a bit of... Oxford University has a building named after Robert Hooke. Uh, the building has um, a Department of Computer Science and PLS uh, Research Partnerships. Um, uh, Hooke uh, was so prolific. Um, uh, one of his most famous um, uh, discoveries was Hooke's Law, uh, which actually uh, stated that the uh, stretching um, of a solid body is proportional uh, to the force applied to it. Um, uh, among many others, his discoveries um, included a balance spring for watches, a new type of reflecting telescope, the first compound microscope and the wheel barometer. And he was also appointed as curator of experiments in the Royal Society after it was formed. At some point he also went into dispute with Newton. Um, and um, until uh, certain times we even didn't have a portrait uh, of uh, Robert Hooke. Uh, and uh, we know uh, in which cemetery he is buried, but we don't even know exactly where his grave is. Uh, there were rumors that uh, Newton uh, either destroyed uh, or prevented uh, um, his portrait from being kept uh, for eternity. But the funny story um, oh, was that uh, even a most famous book about Hook was published with the portrait uh, of another scholar on the front page. Uh, this turned out to be a Flemish scientist in the end. Oxford University Botanic Gardens uh, are the oldest in the country. Next year, the Botanic Gardens will celebrate 400 years. Um, initially, uh, the sum of 5,000 pounds, equivalent to 5 million pounds um, uh, in today's money, was donated. Um, um, and uh, Robert was appointed as the first keeper. He was quite an eccentric man, as many other men in Oxford. Uh, and um, uh, uh, he um, created the first catalogue of plants um, and on feast days uh, um, uh, he had uh, uh, some uh, silver bits in his long beard uh, to decorate himself. Um, uh, so the gardens um, occupy uh, um, about uh, two hectares and uh, at the moment have uh, more than 5,000 plants um, and it is very interesting how it is organized. Uh, some of the beds are organized according to the origin of the country and some of the beds are organized according to medicinal plants, according to diseases these plants uh, help to treat. Uh, also inside the garden um, uh, there is a um, uh, quite a number of um, uh, garden houses, including the palm house, um, and the tropical lily house, and also um, the house with um, uh, carnivascular plants, uh, those plants um, which eat insects. 
and the son of um, uh, Bobert, uh, who became the next keeper, and he also originated the system of seed exchange uh, with the rest of the world, with other botanic gardens in the world, which still exists. The botanic garden was specifically found uh, for growing plants and uh, for use and study in science and medicine. And before, there was a, an old Jewish cemetery on this very place. Here is um, uh, an old plaque um, uh, which says that the stone marks the place of the Jewish cemetery until uh, 1290. Uh, actually, until the time when the Jews were expelled um, uh, from the country um, because they brought their dead uh, uh, bodies uh, from um, the Jewish area, which used to be where the town hall is now, uh, along the dead man's walk uh, towards this place. And now we will see a new plaque which was installed a few years ago to commemorate um, this site. Gardens opposite uh, Modlin College. Uh, this is the Dobini Laboratory, which is now used as a student accommodation. Uh, but it was a laboratory, and money was given uh, by Professor of Botany Charles um, Dobini. And if you look above the door, you can see the inscription, which is actually a quotation from Roger Bacon. And from Latin, it is translated as. Without experience, nothing can be known sufficiently. Make sure you did not miss James Sadler's achievement. Um, he is considered to be the first Englishman to ascend into the atmosphere. I mean hot balloons, of course. Um, um, on the 4th of October 1784, exactly 170 years before Sputnik uh, was made in the Soviet Union, James Sadler made his ascent and actually no one saw it, but he was a very skillful PR manager, so he reported his achievement to the newspaper and it was published. Uh, there is no doubt he did it, he just didn't want to embarrass himself apparently if he invited a, a large crowd and he repeated it in London later. He was a pastry cook um, in St. Peter's Church uh, which is actually part of Teddy Hall at the moment um, uh, and uh, he was more town man uh, than a member of the university uh, so he's um, a bit forgotten at the moment uh, uh, although he is known as the king of air balloons um, and when he died there was only one line uh, in the university magazine uh, that James Sadler, a brother of Mr. Sadler, who was a university member, died. So this is a former St. Peter's Church in the East, um, uh, which is um, now the college library. Uh, of St. Edmund's College yeah. and, and uh, James Sadler was buried here. His grave is actually inside uh, the college yeah. and he was a pastry cook in the church in, in his lifetime. Uh, here we can also see a statue of St. Edmund of Abington and the college is named after him, um, affectionately known as Teddy Hall. So here is a plaque about himself. He was a lecturer, a prominent lecturer in mathematics and theology uh, in the university. And this is one of the unique cases when the college is actually named after someone uh, who was a, <laughs> was a lecturer and became a saint too. Um, a lecture in the same place, I mean. Uh, the college also has a claim that uh, it is apparently uh, the oldest uh, academical society for teaching of undergraduates uh, in the world. Um, um, although the college, uh, um, as a college, uh, uh, has 
this uh, status uh, acquired this status not so long time ago. Um, it uh, might be the oldest uh, place in the world uh, where uh, teaching and living together as a community took place. And as soon as you pass under the bridge of size, uh, the green building on your left is actually the place um, uh, where Edmund Halley discovered uh, the, the periodic orbit of the comet, which later became known as Halley's Comet. So this used to be his small observatory. It was converted into a museum uh, quite recently. It's not accessible, unfortunately, since, uh, since this is the accommodation of new college students. And this plaque uh, was also unveiled uh, um, in uh, um, last December. Halley um, uh, went to Queen's College at the age of 16, uh, but he left later without any degree. Uh, but by that time, he already had uh, one very good scientific uh, publication. Um, um, and um, another interesting thing is that it was him who persuaded Newton to publish some of his works and actually paid for the printing himself. Uh, and uh, um, he became uh, the royal astronomer at some point so we all know about the comet uh, um, and we should all expect it uh, in 2061 the most visible day when sh the comet will be most visible will be the 28th of July and the person who was born and died uh, on, in the year of Halley's Comet uh, uh, appearing was Mark Twain. This is not a very well-known fact, but actually Giordano Bruno came to Oxford. Um, uh, he was favoured with the French king, Henry III, and he came to London by his personal um, uh, letter of support. Uh, and Oxford seemed to be a natural place uh, for him to visit too. Uh, and the university church uh, became uh, a notable place um, during his visit. This is where he had a debate um, which was organized uh, as an entertainment uh, for the visit um, of the Polish nobleman. Uh, and actually after this debate Bruna um, had to leave Oxford. Uh, so as it is written in one of the books uh, that it was not his scientific views because he was giving lectures um, as part of his uh, uh, stay here on the Copernicus theory, um, but uh, rather his attitude, which uh, um, led uh, him to leave Oxford. Uh, but in fact, in one of the other sources, um, uh, it was alleged that there was a bit of plagiarism uh, involved um, um, as part of this debate. That's why uh, he had uh, to go back to London. part of our virtual tour we will be mostly talking about history of medicine and history of mathematics we will see a hidden monument devoted to John Radcliffe we will see a monument to penicillin and uh, we will discuss uh, the most recent Nobel Prize winner Sir Roger Penrose uh, and see the Penrose paving Penrose tiling which you can observe at the moment